Arkansas State is receiving votes in both polls. This might be the best team in the Sun Belt, folks, but they are playing maybe the best team in the SEC. Arkansas State won the toss, chose to defer, and a short kick is fair caught inside the 25. So Alabama will start it due to a new rule this year at the 25. And again, no question, this is Tua Tungavailoa's team. The left-handed quarterback from Hawaii, 6'1", 218, leads his Bama team onto the field. This is ridiculous. I know he played mop-up duty yeah. last year, but you look at the numbers. Yeah, One touchdown every seven passes. And that's amazing. The thing that stands out to me in all of that, though, the 75% completion percentage. He does that throughout the, the season. Uh, I think you're going to be, it'll be a, a, a runaway deal in terms of the Heisman. He'll hand it off first. Damian Harris, who's the running back, lowering his shoulder. And a pickup of eight yards for Damian Harris. One of four running backs on this team with Najee Harris, with Brian Robinson, with Josh Jacobs, who might all have NFL futures. Yeah, they are very deep at that position. All carry kind of different uh, traits in how they get the job done, but effective nonetheless. Keep it on the ground, and Harris once more for a first down run behind that big left tackle, Jonah Williams. A couple of first down runs for Damian Harris, or a couple of runs leading to a first down. Alabama football on the opening drive with Tua Tungabailoa getting his second career start and first in Bryant Tenney Stadium. Tungabailoa pressured, got rid of it to Harris low. Now that's one thing that we haven't seen on film is the pressure in his face. And that's something that every quarterback hates to deal with when it comes right up the middle. And uh, Arkansas State bringing a late blitzer and able to get in the face of Tua. They've chosen to go, try to stop the run with a 4-2 look. Now they're trying to slide extra defenders in the box, as many as eight. Harris will kick it to the outside and cut back. Five yards for Damian Harris at a third down coming up for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, he passed. Damian Harris passed on entering the NFL after last season. He's probably the more complete back of them, especially in pass protection. They feel very, very confident in that ability. Crimson Tide were awesome early in the game, in particular on third down. Converted some third and long situations. They motion Jerry Judy to the left here. Tonga Bailoa over the middle to Judy. There he goes. Jerry Judy hits a home run for an Alabama touchdown. 58 yards on the first possession of the home season. Kevin, you just can't gamble. You have to make for you know absolute sure tackles in the secondary. Otherwise, this young group of receivers, we spent so much time talking about two of the running backs. You forget about a group of sophomore receivers. And Jerry Judy certainly in that, that class that are dynamic in their own right. Longest career catch for Judy, who had four receptions, two scores last week. Three for five, pretty darn good ratio. Two a holds for the extra point, and it's seven nothing in a millisecond. Yeah, simple slant route. You see the eyes of Tua moving coverage, and then it's Judy. Just the athletic ability after the catch to hit the home run. Boy, this is this is something where opponents that face Alabama. Watch the eyes here of, of Tua, and then the ball comes out so quickly. You miss a tackle, and there's speed. They can set up basically a four-by-one relay and go around and compete against anybody in the entire country with these four receivers. And I'm talking about Jalen Waddle. I'll throw him in there as well, the true freshman. So six for seven touchdowns for Tunga Bailoa this year, and the one drive that didn't lead to a touchdown, Devontae Smith lost a fumble across Louisville territory last week. Nick Saban told us yesterday, quote, I don't think collectively we've had a better four guys, unquote, talking about his young wide receivers, Judy, Smith, Waddle, and Henry Ruggs. There's Arkansas State football after the quick touchdown. 
And Justice Hansen, the record-setting quarterback, takes the field for these Red Wolves. Yeah, he's a guy with a big arm. He's, he'll stand in there, take some punishment to get the ball out. Very, very calm demeanor. He's played a lot of football, three years as a starter here at Arkansas State. Also, a, a seven, more 70 plus completion percentage and then he's athletic to go along with it Kevin not afraid to pull the ball down they they classify him basically as a dual threat quarterback Sunbelt offensive player of the year set conference records last year for passing touchdowns total touchdowns total offense and he will throw it to his running back here this is Warren Wan who stands at all of 5'5 five, five and 184 pounds for a pickup of five yards. Yeah. Mac Wilson on the stop. And this is what they want to do, get slot receivers matched against base personnel. Alabama, they don't like to substitute bring nickel and dime in much. They want to stay with a couple of linebackers on the field. That's to Arkansas State's advantage if they choose to play that way. You want slot receivers, running backs matched against these big linebackers of Alabama. First penalty against Blake Anderson's crew, the 50-year head coach of the Red Wolves. What a job he has done following in the footsteps of some of the top coaches in FBS today. Brian Harson had the job before him. Gus Malzahn the year before that. There's Hugh Freeze, former Ole Miss coach before that. Nice run by Warren Wan. Just kind of finding, picking some soft spots and Getting it back to a manageable situation here on third down. Arkansas State last year, Andre averaged nearly 38 points per game, 12th in the nation. 48 in the opener against Southeast Missouri State. This isn't Southeast Missouri no. State. And it's no one that they had on the schedule all of last year. This is a different animal, when you, especially going on the road facing a team the caliber of Alabama. Hanson with some time and a sidearm throw through the hands of Justin McKinnis. Well, and that's one where you want the matchup. Basically their best route runner and Justin McKinnis matched against Mac Wilson, the big middle linebacker. And Wilson actually fell down. And McKinnis had a shot to catch it and actually run for the first down. When you watch the film and talk about missed opportunities tomorrow, that's one where offensively you're going to say that's a missed opportunity to move the chains. Well, this could be fun. Cody Grace, one of the best punters in the nation for Arkansas State. You like this guy. I don't think he's going to try to kick it to Jalen Waddle, though. And Grace has trouble with the snap. The ball is free. Grace gets it away low. It will take a friendly bounce. Great job to just get it away by Cody Grace, although it will lead to excellent field position for Alabama. All that could go wrong to start a game that you don't want to have happen if your Arkansas State has happened here early, giving up a big play and then a mistake in the kicking game going to give Alabama excellent field position and this is where Michael Loxley the offensive coordinator the penalty is five yards from the end of the play first down Alabama this is where Michael Loxley the offensive coordinator don't be surprised he likes to dial them up deep especially starting a drive here with a field position that Alabama's going to have I don't know if this necessarily qualifies as a deep shot when you Look at what Tua is able to do. Well, there was a late five-yard penalty tacked on to the end of the play, so it's even better field position. Goes as a punt of seven yards officially, though it was much more than that for Cody Graves. And it's Bama ball just outside the 30. Watch Devontae Smith down at the bottom. Tug of Iloa looking that way and nearly intercepted. Off the hands of Jeremy Smith. That was right in the breadbasket for the freshman out of Atlanta, Texas. Boy, nice shot, but this is one another opportunity in a game. This one will work, missed. though. 
Broken tackle by Henry Ruggs, and Alabama is in the end zone again. 31 yards for Tunga Bailoa to Ruggs. Three big mistakes early by Arkansas State, and it's led to two big touchdowns for the Crimson Tide. Just inside position, they do a nice job of this. Big body of, of Henry Ruggs inside right here in zone coverage, sitting down, showing two of the numbers, and then finishing this thing off in the end zone. B.J. Edmonds, very good safety for Arkansas State. He has missed the tackle on the touchdown from Judy and Ruggs. The extra point, though, is a doinker off the upright from Austin Jones, who missed an extra point and a field goal last week. So Nick Saban's going to have something about which to be curmudgeonly. Luckily for him, his team's got two scores in a few minutes. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. See if Red at Brian Tenney Stadium, first home game of the year. Alabama with two touchdowns in three and a half minutes. Two completions, two scores for Tua Tunga Bailoa, Jerry Judy from 58 yards away, and Henry Ruggs from a measly 31 out. Kick is away from Joseph Bullivis after Austin Jones missed the extra point. Kirk Merritt, the Oregon and Texas A&M transfer, runs it out across the 20. Lots of Juco transfers on this Arkansas State team. Merritt, chief among them. They're fast. You want fast scores. First drive, five plays, 75 yards. The touchdown to Jerry Judy. And then the second one, two plays after giving up some pretty good field position to Alabama. Two plays, 31 yards, and the touchdown pass to Henry Ruggs. That's quick. We talked with Jonah Williams, their left tackle yesterday. Asked him about Mike Loxley, this new offensive coordinator. What was different? He said Coach Loxley came in day one, said, I know Alabama's known for defense. I want this group to be known for its offense. They've got the weapons that maybe they haven't had here before. Quarterback on down. As Arkansas State starts his drive with a quick hitter to Justin McKinnis for nine. Yeah, he goes, I have known locks a long time and it goes back to my his days at at uh, illinois they haven't had an offense like like he's called in quite some time his back shoulder throw there but mckinnis couldn't hang on hansen took a shot late trayvon digs in coverage and it's third down and one arkansas state three and out for the pass through the hands of mckinnis on the first drive and once again hansen and mckinnis not quite on the same page. Well, you talk about opportunities. You have got to capitalize on the road against the number one team in the nation. The plays are there for Arkansas State. Out of the flats, Hanson's got his tight end. A broken tackle by Javadis Isaac. And a Red Wolves first down. Much needed first down. Defense has played a lot of snaps so far. Been on the field a lot in this ball game early. Got to give them a rest. You've got to move the football. Keep Alabama's high-scoring offense off the, off the field. And as well, get yourself some points in this drive. They will spread it out, Arkansas State. Over the middle, this one is the first catch for Omar Bayless. Redshirt Jr. from Laurel, Mississippi. Xavier McKinney to stop a gain of 15. Well, what a move he, to set up the defensive back. Double move to get inside position. He double moves him outside and then comes right there to free himself up once again against the linebacker. It's what Alabama wants to do. It's to Arkansas State's advantage if you can continue to isolate big linebackers in space. Arkansas State last week had 11 players with multiple catches. Seven players caught a touchdown in the win over Southeast Missouri State. Late substitution for Arkansas State. We're going to get a timeout. Alabama was given a chance to substitute late. A little bit of confusion. And the Red Wolves take a timeout.
Arkansas State on the move on its second drive in Alabama territory. This is a Red Wolves team that had seven different players catch a touchdown last game. A lot of size with the wide receivers. And the one advantage they might have here against Alabama, Andre, is this passing game. It's a talented but a very green secondary for the time. Yeah, it's an experienced group of receivers that they really know how to get things done. You, you see there's seven wide receivers over 6-3. The men's basketball team had nine <laughs> all of last year, so this is a big, big group. That's what Justice Hansen told us. It looks like a basketball team when they get out on the field. Good pressure up the middle there. Anthony Jennings all over that screen. Yeah, just trying to get too cute. Alabama, when they rush the passer, they rush to a point and then start inward. So you're not going to be able to fool them in terms of middle screens and things of that sort. It's going to be tunnel screens, screens to the slot receivers. And, you know, on this drive, I thought they had the right recipe. Seven passes, only one run to get this drive started. And in late pressure again. Delivers it and nearly had a touchdown. Oh, he had Kirk Merritt running all alone down the sideline. It's another missed connection for A-State. I think he felt the pressure of a late blitzer coming in his face and really couldn't sit in the pocket to deliver this football. But he had Merritt right up the, the sideline. A little out and up. There's the late blitzer and just over the outstretched hands of the receiver. Big third down here for Arkansas State to keep this drive alive. Even if you don't get all 10, you'd like to get something in Alabama territory. It is a draw play using that philosophy. Warren won. And the question here, down two scores on the road against number one, do you go for it? I think he's certainly thinking about it. And Justice Hansen has actually exited the field, so I think that thought is, is just about over. They're going to go ahead and, and punt the football here. You would think that's that was the logical way of thinking after a draw play up the middle for about roughly five yards or so. Well, fourth and six, here's Cody Grace. Now Nick Saban told us he was ready for about a hundred different punt formations from Arkansas State. Yeah, they're excellent on special teams. He's got to feel the punt. Excuse me, feel the snap. Zach Cottingham with a clean snap here. And a fair catch made by Jalen Waddell. At his own 11, punts of 31 yards. Two possessions, two touchdowns for Alabama. Number three when we return. And college football is presented by the unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. Energy lives here. And in part by Mazda. Feel alive. First home game for Alabama after a neutral sider against Louisville and Orlando last week. They've scored on both of their drives. Or to a tongue by Loa. Three drives for him to start the game. This is an absolutely ridiculous statistic that our folks cooked up. 72.5% of Tua Tungavailoa's drives have ended in touchdowns in his Alabama career. He'll throw it on the first play here. It's complete. It's the tight end, Irv Smith, for a first down. Let's check in with Chris Cotter back in the studio. <laughs> I couldn't grow it back <laughs> if I tried. Well, I hope you will for our sake now. That is an incomplete pass. Jalen Waddle was the intended receiver. That note you saw in two up, we're excluding drives 
that ended the half or ended the game in terms of drives where Alabama was running out the clock. So competitive drive where you're trying to score. It's amazing. Alabama scored 72 plus percent of the time with Tua at quarterback. I know a lot of that was in garbage time last year. That's still absurd efficiency. It really is. I mean, he's very efficient with the ball. You know, take the pass, the last pass he completed and where it was placed. Nice placement here right back to Waddle. Look at this kid run. The freshman took the nation by storm, returning punts last week in Orlando. He dances and dazzles for a gain of nine here. He's just a talent in which you want to get Waddle the ball in space. Episcopal High School right there in Houston, Texas. And came in as a true, you know, obviously a true freshman, but has really climbed the receiver depth chart in a hurry. They realized exactly what they had, not only as a receiver, but as a return man. New right guard for this play, Scott Lashley. Jedrick Will's helmet came off. He has to sit for third down in the yard. Running back is Josh Jacobs. Arkansas State stuffs the box. And Jacobs is pushed back. That's a stop for the Red Wolves. Derek Bean, the freshman, in there to lead the charge. And Arkansas State gets a third down play. Well, one of the few times that you'll see this Alabama offense go under center. I think they've kind of morphed into something different where you think, you know, a tight end, a couple of tight ends, one back, you know, one back, two tight ends. It's mostly now a talented receiving group that they want to get them on the field, spread it out, and take advantage of the arm of Tua. But Arkansas State holds up there on third down, going to force the first punt of the ball game by Alabama. Late substitution for the punt team as well for Alabama. A little delay a game penalty here. Nick Saban was rather frustrated with the penalties last week. In Alabama's win over Louisville. You talk about strives for perfection every single play. Not every game, but every play within every game. Every practice during the week demands it from not only his players, but the coaches as well. Arkansas State nearly got the punt. Skyler DeLong ended up on the ground, but there is no flag. Boy, the Red Wolves. Just brought the house and nearly created a play on special teams. Only a, a little, kick of 32, though, so the field position still good. Well, a little acting job by Scholar DeLong. They actually miss him. Don't really touch him, but he gets. they get just close enough, and if they do, go ahead and, and take a fall. Maybe the officials throw the flag, but they go right by him. Well, maybe clip the ankle a little bit, but still not enough for the official to throw a flag. It was Jay Adams, wide receiver they love, who... Almost got the punt. Yeah, this is find that matchup. Find a matchup you like. If you're Justice Hansen. Hansen on the rollout. Not gonna like that matchup. He is crunched. First sack of the game, a loss of nine. It's Dylan Moses, the sophomore who might be the next great linebacker here in Bama. Well, it's a head scratcher because he's been protected inside. You get him out on the edge where, you know, now the, the vertical speed of a guy like Moses is to their advantage. Go ahead and sit in that pocket and read things out. Second sack in as many games for Moses. And he is in on the tackle here as Kirk Merritt only picks up two. Alabama last week had some defensive breakdowns against Louisville, but they were all over. Puma pass and the Cardinals in the backfield. 11 tackles for loss, three sacks. A couple of interceptions, one of which was run back by Shaheen Carter for a late touchdown. Hanson, nowhere to go. Gets rid of it, nearly picked off. That was in the hands of Mac Wilson. A disastrous set for Arkansas State. But Alabama's front seven, as dominant as it can be. Well, they say in golf, if you're going to lay up, lay up. If you're going to throw it away, throw it away. Don't throw it in the area where there's a defender and excellent coverage against a receiver. Go ahead and sling that baby out of bounds in that area where you don't get intentional grounding and go ahead and punt the football here. But that was a little bit too close for comfort, I guarantee you, for Blake Anderson, the head coach. Third punt for Cody Grace already. 
Jalen Waddle had 80 yards on four punt returns. He had a 75-yard touchdown negated. And he will not take this one as Grace sails it out of bounds. Alabama football at the 29. 45 yards on the punt. No return. ESPN tonight. Number two, Clemson visits Texas A&M. Game day was there this morning in College Station. 7 Eastern, 6 Central for Debo Swinney of the Tigers against Jimbo Fisher. First big game for Jimbo at Texas A&M after that 10-year mega-million dollar contract. It's about as even as you can get it right there. Ninth head-to-head -head meeting partner. It's 4-4. 1-1 of national titles. Two of the best in FBS, and they meet for the first time outside of all ACC play. Tungvaloa on first down, incomplete. What do you think of Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. What was your take on that move, and where is this Aggie team headed? I, I, honestly, I didn't think he would ever leave Florida State to begin with. So it was an excellent hire in terms of you know making a change at at the at the helm of uh, leadership in that program. Uh, he's going to have to adapt to Texas, but I think he's going to do a heck of a job there. It's just right. going to take some time. He's been riding on enough horses so far. He's adapting well. How about this? This defensive stand here by Arkansas State and the way they look to start this drive. Force an errant throw on first down by Tua, and then they're stopping him on a design quarterback run. Now, get off the field. And I don't know that I would allow him to sit in the pocket because he can carve you up, bring some pressure, get some pressure somehow in his face. Joe Compton doesn't love the blitz too much, he told us. The defensive coordinator, he won't rush too many here. Tonga Bailoa over the middle cut. Look at Judy, turn on a dime to the 44-yard line for 14 more yards. I, I know against some players, that may be your philosophy in terms of not blitzing and bringing pressure, but this is a different cat that you're playing today. This is what he will do to you all game long if you don't force the ball out of his hands a little bit faster. Then he wants to get it out. On the ground, this is Najee Harris. Harris, the second string running back, took a hit up high as he crossed the 45. First down run of 16 for the sophomore. And he runs with natural instincts that you just can't coach. He knows when and where to cut. Had an outstanding high school career. Five-star running back out of Antioch, California. He was one of the late heroes in the national championship last season. Has it again on a dance to the inside. He's a tough runner. I, I loved what Mike Loxley told us yesterday about these running backs and how as a play caller, you can sometimes get tunnel vision. It was late in that game. Yeah. Nick Saban said to him, I want Najee in on this drive. Bit of a surprise to everybody is Najee had not been touching the ball much late in the year. It's a good point because that, you know, you, Coach Saban has a pulse, has the pulse of this team basically at all times. Knew that there needed to be a change, knew what was needed, inserted Harris into the backfield, and, and he just ran wild. Tunga by Law. Pocket collapses around him, and down he goes. There's the pressure that we were talking about. Dejon Emery with his second sack of the year, the senior Juco transfer from Pennsylvania. And along with the middle linebacker, Chambers, able to get home and not allow Tua to sit back in the pocket, survey things, take his time, and deliver the football. He's so accurate, if you give him time to throw it, he's going to complete passes. There, a nice job of getting into his lap. And a sack for the pride of Lackawanna College. Third and 11 for Alabama. There's more pressure's coming. Tunga Bailoa has a wide open receiver. It's Devontae Smith. Have we seen this before? Tunga Bailoa to Smith, 41-yard touchdown. It's the national title all over again, sort of. I would say if uh, out of the four receivers, that have caught passes today, that might be, and not maybe, a, not so much his favorite receiver, but the one that he's got the chemistry with. And you get to a point as a quarterback where you can read a guy's body language, 
that's where the chemistry is. They, they fake a corner blitz. Tua eyes it down, and now the safety can't get there fast enough. B.J. Edmonds, and they, he, they pay for it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy, boy, indeed. Austin Jones has gone pinballing off both uprights now. And it's a highly usual 19-0 Alabama. I'm just saying, to go back to the touchdown, and Georgia learned this last year, if Alabama's at your 41-yard line, maybe don't let Devontae Smith get behind the safety. <laughs> no. I mean, it's the, the chemistry between the two of them is just flat, flat out outstanding. Off the charts already, the sophomore quarterback, the sophomore wide receiver. They can stream college football this game and many others all season long on ESPN Plus. Start your free trial today. Download the ESPN app or visit ESPNplus.com. Continue to add new content to ESPN Plus. I know you love the boxing. We've oh, got yeah. a new show this week, Katie Nolan. Always late with Katie Nolan, now available on ESPN Plus. With more and more and more to come. And it is free to try. And I promise you're not going to want to go back. Mari Medley in a quick return, Arkansas State. We'll start just shy of the 25. You talk about needing points in the worst way. It's almost now time to abandon the game plan, and you got to open this thing up and start putting some pressure on Alabama's defense. Now, that's not easy to do, but it's a young group in the secondary, and they've had some opportunities where they missed on a couple of occasions. Merritt up the sideline. That would have been a touchdown and a couple of drop passes that would have kept the chains moving. Blake Anderson said they have the edge and elevation in terms of those tall receivers. Is that what you're thinking here? Yeah, 50-50 balls. We got to make some plays. Freshman running back Marcel Murray is into the game. And they are awfully excited about him. Coaches say that Murray has the speed to match up in this game. A true freshman out of Ireland, Georgia. Yeah, he's not afraid of the situation. A great game fake breaker type, as you mentioned, with speed, good size at 5'11", just under 200 pounds. Swing pass for Hanson Kirk. Merritt gets through a couple of defenders. Merritt hops back to the inside for some extra yards after contact. He's across midfield talked about the speed of Merritt as well. He's the fastest offensive player. So they want to, wanted to get some speed on the field with Merritt along with Murray, the true freshman, and both have touched the football the last two plays. 20-yard catch and run, and Hanson goes right back there. Kirk Merritt, that is incomplete. Kirk Merritt, a well-traveled wide receiver for this Arkansas State team. It may be time for a couple of double moves here a part of Arkansas State and their receiving group. Alabama playing very close press coverage in some instances and then biting on the first receiver's initial on the, the receiver's initial move. So now it's time for some slant and goes, some, some out and ups. If you can protect Hanson, it's there. The question right now is can you protect Hanson? Second down, here they come. Hanson running for his life. He can move it. And he is taken down from behind. Getting wow. Back to the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Bugs, super speed at 6'5", 286. JC transfer who is playing some consistent football, but the big fella would not allow Hanson to turn the corner. It's the athletic ability of number 49, Isaiah Bugs, getting around the corner that's a heck of a job five receivers on a third and long Hanson will go short and it's dropped Jay Adams misses his first target and it's another Arkansas State mistake in this opening quarter this is what Justice Hanson has to come to grips with you're going to get hit in this football game are you going to fight back from the hits are you going to stand in the pocket and deliver accurately 
to your receivers. Because if you start watching the pass rush, it's going to be a long, long afternoon at quarterback for Arkansas State. He can control it. He's a senior, a three-year starter. you got to just realize, I'm going to take a shot. In certain games at quarterback, you know you're going to get beaten up, and it's going to be an ice tub the day, a day later. This is one of those ice tub games that Justin Han- Justice Hansen's going to play in. I think you've just tailored a new phrase. I like that. It's an ice tub game. <laughs> Bunch of 34 for Grace. Another fair catch by Waddle. Hey, for all the national championships in one year, Alabama only has two, uh, one more Heisman Trophy than this booth. Mark Ingram, 2009. Were you there in the I background was, somewhere? I was there for this How one, I now? think, for Derrick Henry's uh, when, when he won it a couple of years ago. 2015, Alabama. Eight running backs drafted in the last eight years. Those two are two of the better ones. They get the Heisman favorite by uh, betting lines right now on the bench because Jalen Hurts is on for his first series at quarterback. Now here he is, folks, the two-year starter, Jalen Hurts. And he will give it to Damian Harris on the first play as Harris falls forward for a yard. Tonga Bailoa watching. Just a, there's a flag on Arkansas State. Offside, first and five coming up. What a first quarter it's been for Arkansas State on the wrong side of how you want to start a game. But a first quarter on the right side for that kid. Six completions, half of them to the end zone. Riggs, Judy, and Smith have scored. Hurts with a play fake. He'll roll out, and he's got it. Henry Riggs over to the sideline for a first down throw. Let me tell you something about Jalen Hurts. Watching him in practice on Thursday, he's better. He is a better quarterback and a better passer than he has ever been in his career here at Alabama. It just happens that Tua is on the other side. You know, Tua plays the same position, but Jalen Hurts is a much better football player than he was at this point a year ago. Mike Loxley told us he adds more to his toolbox every game. And of course, the two-year starter, a record of 26 and two in games he has started. And it helps when you have big 34 in the backfield. Harris had a great block on the last pass. Here a run of 11. Well, they've gone to you know, kind of a, a heavier package with tight end Irv Smith. And then this condensed kind of running game with Damian Harris, along with Jalen Hurts in the ball game. Just deciding they're going to turn it over to the offensive line in this possession. And let them play a little bit. Brandon Biner, Richard Sr. from Bessemer, Alabama, is down right now. He was hurt in the opener last year for Arkansas State. On his feet. You look at Mike Loxley, offensive coordinator, the fourth in three years for Alabama. Enough to take Illinois to a Rose Bowl, and as I mentioned earlier, they haven't been anywhere close to it since Michael Loxley left left uh, Champaign, Illinois. Excellent play caller, sets up plays and gets to them later, sets up the shot plays, and then one of the best teachers of the spread offense that I have ever been around. Just knows all the concepts, the route, the route trees that go along with certain plays. He's an excellent teacher. Jalen Hurts back to the chest of Harris. Hard runner hit hard. Eight yards on first down. Takes us to the end of the first quarter. Start with the bad news. Alabama's missed two extra points. The good news, the rest. Three touchdown throws for Tua. Tugged by Loa. And the tie. Up three scores in their home opener. College football playoff lives on ESPN. Four years of the college football playoff. Alabama has been in all four and won two. That young man took Alabama to the championship game, and that young man won it for him in the second half, the quarterback. 
Crimson Tide with three touchdown drives from Tonga Bailoa. Now Jalen Hurts giving it to Harris once again. Damian Harris to the 25. And another big time run of 15 yards for the senior back out of Richmond, Kentucky. A yeah, talented back. has gone over 1,000 yards the last two seasons for Alabama. Led the team in rushing both years. This tough, hard to bring down. Elusive, excellent. I mentioned it earlier in pass protection, but he is tough to bring down. Could be the first to go over 1,000 three years in a row. Nobody's done that at Alabama. Hurts will swing it to him. Harris makes a man miss. Damian Harris inside the 10. B.J. Edmonds with the hit. 14 yards, first and goal coming up. Well, it's what you teach and, and how to execute the play. Once you catch it, make one defender miss, and then get north and south. And you see him try to split the defenders. Excellent job by Damian Harris. Stay on the ground, and it's Harris down to the four. You can tell this is just a well-oiled machine, well-coached offense. No matter who's in the game, Harris, Najee Harris. We'll see Josh Jacobs at some point, along with Brian Robinson, both at running back. And, of course, Jalen Hurts leading a nice drive, scoring drive here of his own. Hurts keeps it. Jalen Hurts up in the air. He gets crunched. Ball is out. Arkansas State has it at the one. Hurts trying to make a play. Justin Clifton comes up with a football for Arkansas State. He right, took a shot. Tried to propel himself into the end zone and took one heck of a shot right in the middle of the two. That's one thing Coach Saban's going to talk about is protecting the football and Darian Jackson forced the fumble put the hit on or laid the hit on Jalen Hurts and you know, this Arkansas State offense backed up but still with an opportunity do you think that's Jalen Hurts trying a little too hard to make a play no, you, you never try to you never discourage effort and that's an effort play that as a coach or as a fan you want to see you just got to protect the football yep. when you go airborne you got to protect it. Hanson will try to get some breathing room here and dive forward for a couple of yards from his own goal line. I never have understood this, where you pack it in and try to push Alabama's front seven to give yourself some room. Spread them out. You know you got to get rid of the football quickly, but you got 6'6 six, six receivers. Take a shot down the field. He's a senior quarterback. He's got to realize that. The ball's got to come out. Second and eight. Back on the ground. You're not going anywhere here. You're just getting a couple of yards to punt the football. Go ahead and execute. Take a shot. The worst at worst, it's an incomplete pass, which you haven't done anything here. Maybe you get pass interference. Maybe you get you catch a 50-50 ball. But I've never understood that. Not just against Alabama, but against in any ball game when coaches do that. Really, maybe just one vertical shot in that first quarter was nearly a touchdown as Hanson overthrew Merritt back on the ground. And here comes a punt. That was three and nothing for Arkansas State. And you want to reward a defense that's tired, worn down, facing some of the best offensive talent in the country, and they just forced a, a fumble. You got to give them some, give them, you know, a breather here. Are you surprised by this? It sounded like Arkansas State was going to take some shots from when we talked to yeah. Justice Hansen and Blake Anderson. What surprises me, you have all these, these huge receivers and young a young secondary for Alabama. It's worth a shot. Nobody's saying it's easy, but it oh, is no. their strength. Grace, his own end zone, got it away. Or did he? This play never happened. Pretend you didn't see it. Timeout taken before the snap by Arkansas State. Three and out forced by Nick Saban's defense, and that leads to maybe the heavyweight matchup of the game, Andre Ware. On the left, the freshman from Houston, 
The dynamic punt returner, Jalen <laughs> Waddle, on the right. The punter from Australia, Cody Grace, one of the nation's best. This is all season they allowed eight yards in the punt return game. I think if you can avoid punting the Waddle, you do just that. And you avoid it out of your own end zone. I, I don't think you question. can avoid it here, but maybe you angle it <laughs> to, the, to a sideline where you, you cut your losses, so to speak. Alabama's coming for it. Race gets it away. Good punt. Waddle, fair catch, called for, muffed it. Ball's up in the air, muffed by an Arkansas State player, and there is a scrum. Looks like Alabama got back on top of it. Alabama football after the bottle off the fair catch attempt by Jalen Waddle. Well, just opportunity after opportunity going the way of the Crimson Tide. Arkansas State right there to make a play and maybe come up with a muff punt, some field position. Once again, it goes over to Alabama. Out of the hands of Damari Medley, he was right on it. Oh, some punt. 52 yards. You don't see many fair catches of 52 yard kicks. Grace has been awesome. And now Arkansas State's defense trying to make another play. Jalen Hurts back at quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Jalen Hurts gives it to Josh Jacobs. Maybe the best third string running back in the country. Uh, he would start talking to Michael Loxley. He would start for a lot of, a lot of programs. Battled a hamstring injury a year ago, but is finally healthy. Draws comparisons to Darren Sproles. And you talk about great practice habits. Jacobs has it. Hurts off the fake toss up to the 45. B.J. Edmonds the tackle. Third and short coming up. They haven't all been up in the booth. Alabama's offensive coordinators over the years. Loxley is comfortable there. Former head coach at New Mexico. He came here as an analyst a couple of years ago. On third down, keep it on the ground to Jacobs. Jacobs squirts three across the 45. First down, Alabama. Time to check in with Alex Cordry back on the field. Kevin, Andre, we asked offensive coordinator Mike Loxley what it's like to have so many weapons. And he says, we teach our players to be selfless. He used the analogy of the Golden State Warriors to his players. And he also said, we're going to call plays that our best guys are touching the ball. He loves being aggressive. Take a shot here, but Hurts is hit as he throws. Incomplete pass. Just to put a bow on that, he's, he's, he described it as a sports car that's super fast that nobody else has, and he has the keys and gets a chance to drive it. Here's Michael Loxley talking about this Alabama offense and all the talent that, uh, that, that lies here. It's amazing. There's not a better quarterback room in the country with yeah. Tonga Bailoa and Hurts. There's not a better running back room with these four. There may not be a better wide receiver room with the four. Don't young forget guys. the offensive line. They're pretty Absolutely. talented up there as well with a top 10 pick in Jonah Williams. A couple of preseason All-Americans on that line. This is Herb Smith, whose knee hits the ground after three yards. Third and long coming up. This is where Jalen Hurts has been so effective. Third downs, being able to pull the ball down and make plays with his legs I mentioned earlier he has come a long way in a short period of time within a year of making himself a better passer Smith and Waddle together at the top of the formation Hurts locked in that way Devontae Smith a first down gets free of two tacklers look at Devontae Smith go this kid is a machine. Oh, what a throw by Jalen Hurts. On time, right as the receiver is coming out of his break. Far hash, so the ball is in the air a long time. You've got to have some, some arm strength to complete that one. It's a heck of a throw by Jalen Hurts. Nice reaction there by Tua in support of Jalen Hurts. After the pass of 30, Hurts with all day. Over the middle, Herb Smith, touchdown.
Jalen Hurts, 62nd career total touchdown at Alabama is his first of 2018. And the first to congratulate Jalen Hurts is Tua, but watch the read by Jalen Hurts and then put some smoke on that one to the big tight end, Herb Smith. Nice read and the timing. That's one of the things that's kind of plagued Jalen Hurts is holding the ball a little bit too long. Boy, the timing of those last two completions were outstanding. And a bronze cheer in Tuscaloosa. The new <laughs> kicker, Joseph Bullivus, the redshirt freshman, makes the extra points. Everything's coming up crimson. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. And the Lexus RX, featuring pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, standard. Great work for both Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungavailoa today. Three passing touchdowns for Tua. Hurts lost a fumble at the one last drive, but completed a brutally efficient drive here with a touchdown pass to Ertz Smith. Arkansas State continues to not take advantage of the new fair catch rule. Start at the 15 as we check in with Chris Cotter. I'm wondering if South Carolina can get back in that game. What do you think? They're at home. Anything's possible. Jake Bentley's got to get going, though. He'll get yep. himself started. Loaded Georgia team up by 10 on the road in SEC play. Boy, way too many mistakes. Drops. Marcel Murray there incomplete. And Arkansas State is playing in Alabama. All right, you, you have to play perfect to have a shot. We know that. They have dropped passes. They've dropped an interception. They've had trouble with a punt snap. Yep. It has been. Ta tackling. Yeah, it, it's been a game of missed opportunities so far for them. The task is tall enough if you don't miss any. Hansen deflected. Dylan Moses elevated to get his big paws on that one. And the reason why you point this stuff out is that this is a good football team. Arkansas State is a good football team. They are better than what they're playing or showing today. Right here, Dylan Moses right off the edge, and he is some, some talent. They talk and rave about that young man. He'll be just a sophomore, going to be a sensational player, maybe the next great linebacker here in Alabama. Here's another drop, Kirk Merritt from Hanson. There is a flag in the backfield. Holding number 73 offense. Decline. And a holding penalty decline. Mark Curls, our referee. Arkansas State, look, they're picked to win the Sun Belt. I know it's the Sun Belt. I know it's considered one of the worst conferences in FBS. They're still a team that has had about as much success as anybody in the group of five last yeah, seven years. They or really so. have. They, they might be favored in every other game this year. And we say all that to show you that what you're seeing now, this is not Southeast Missouri State. This is not an FCS school, this is a good team. They've just made mistakes in every aspect of the game right now. Buddy Grace, <laughs> continuing his ridiculous day. Jalen Waddle hasn't had a chance. He's been the bright spot for Arkansas State, that's for sure. Last two punts, 52 and 53, both with a fair catch. Hey, NFL season, it's already underway. First Sunday tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central. The Countdown crew kicks it off. Samantha Ponder with Rex Ryan, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, Mort Shefty, and the new Hall of Famer Randy Moss. Live in the ESPN app as well as you get ready for week one of NFL Sunday. Let's look for icon number 14. 
Tony is 15 yards from the end of the play and a first down. That's number 14 first, unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Unsportsmanlike conduct added to the end of the play against Arkansas State and Antonio Fletcher, number 14. It's always the guy that retaliates. Every single time. It's Keaton Anderson got the first shove for Alabama. And it's 15 yards against Arkansas State. Alabama has it from the tied 48. Jalen Hurts quarterback for a third straight series. Najee Harris a running back. A stiff arm and a burst to the outside for Najee Harris. Just so tough to bring down. Both he, both Harris running backs. Damian Harris and Najee Harris. We saw a glimpse of Josh Jacobs the last series. Uh, he is about as elusive as the other two. Harris again darting through. Flag is down well behind the play. Harris hurdles across the 20. It's a show-stopping run, but it might not count. Maybe coming back for a hold. Lester Cotton is moving around really slow. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number eight, defense. Oh, boy. It's actually on the defense. First foul. It's Ron Keen Bingham, very talented defensive end, called for a hands to the face penalty. So an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty got the drive started. That was a big one. And then you get a hands to the face. That's another one. But Blake Anderson is, there may be paint peeling off the wall <laughs> by the time he gets through talking to his team. This mistakes and just compounding. He may need some hair dye at the half. First and goal, Alabama. Hurts keeps it. Hit as he throws. Delivers a strike. Jerry Judy has his second touchdown of the game. Unbelievable throw by Jalen Hurts. That's how you've got to stare down the barrel of it and still deliver. And I mean taking a shot right there and still being accurate with the football. That is playing on another level, my friend. Kevin Thurman just drilled him, and Hurts just drilled the throw. The second touchdown pass in as many drives. He is six for seven in the game, and Bulovis hits his second straight extra points. There aren't a lot of guys that are going to sign up to take this shot that Jalen Hurts took, getting Alabama on the board once again. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Jalen Hurts third all time in Alabama touchdown passes. He's hit Herb Smith, he's hit Jerry Judy. Crimson Tide have five touchdown catches. Judy with a couple. Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, and Herb Smith have scored as well. Four drives, three touchdowns for Tua Tungavailoa. Three drives, two touchdowns. And a fumble lost at the one for Jalen Hurts. Here's a fair catch for Kurt Merritt. Arkansas State football at the 25. Big one tonight on ESPN 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Clemson, Alabama's playoff partner the last three years, goes to Texas A&M. First big test for Jimbo Fisher after the Aggies blew out Northwestern State last week. There aren't many no. active in FBS that have won a title. Urban Meyer is still out for a couple of weeks. The other three are either in College Station or right here. Amazing stuff. Nick Saban with six. Ty Bear Bryant. Merritt out of the backfield will take this backwards pass, and he will go backwards, maybe back to the line of scrimmage on first down. Still continue to say they're biting so hard 
on the initial move of receivers that a play like that, take it to merit, hit a guy up the sideline. You gotta get some guys out in space. You're not gonna beat Alabama's defense moving the ball laterally. They're just too fast. Justice Hansen began his career at Oklahoma. Juco transferred. 13th ranked quarterback on Todd McShay's early list. He has faced the heat, not delivered so far. Off his back foot here in the trap. There's a 50-50 ball, and there's a flag. Jonathan Adams and some tight coverage. That was my point when they were backed up inside the one-yard line. To take a shot like that, you get a pass interference call. Number two defense. Only 50 yards from the previous spot. First down. That's the breathing room that you're looking for. Big receiver and Jonathan Adams, 6'3", 209. Sophomore working against Patrick Sertain, the true freshman. That is, by the way. He's going to be a good yeah. player. Patrick Sertain, the son of Patrick Sertain. And yeah. Three-time Pro Bowl Dolphins corner. Rave about, rave about him at 6'2", 202 pounds as a true freshman. Hanson keeps it on the first down. Intercepted! Savion Smith took it away. Savion Smith scores. Over and over, you're trying to screen and throw short, and guys keep jumping routes. Didn't fool them with a play action. You're trying to set up a screen outside, and it's just not there. And Savion Smith steps right in front of it. And House is that thing. 19th defensive touchdown in the last 46 games for Alabama, and they're second in as many games this year. Jaheim Carter took one to the house last week. Savion Smith, the Juco transfer, does today. Let's check in once more with Chris Cotter in the studio. I was impressed with that win last week as any in the entire country or games that I watched. Notre Dame looked excellent. Meanwhile, Alabama non-offensively scores about as well as some teams do offensively in the country. They only had two last year. That's the odd thing. Deron Payne, of course, the big man, had the interception. And then he scored an offensive touchdown in the game against Clemson. Mack Wilson ran in a touchdown for one of those two. Not offensive touchdowns have been a, a, a specialty under Saban 15 two years ago. Last week, Jacobs had the kick return. Carter the pick six. Jalen Waddle had a punt return touchdown waved off, and they look to be back to their old ways. So you're saying that they can score in every way possible? I'm saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that one of these band members coming on the field might score at halftime. I don't know. Anything's possible, Andre Ware. Raining points in Tuscaloosa. No, it's a lot to be excited about because you've got a dynamic return man in true freshman Waddle. And then the defense is young, but coming around a little bit faster than I think people anticipated here in Tuscaloosa. And the offense just, well, that speaks for itself. There's still 6.44 to go in the first half, by the way. Don't adjust your television screen. That's a 40 under Alabama's logo, or next to the logo. Three touchdown passes for Tungavailoa, two for Hertz, and Savion Smith, who began his career at LSU. First year Alabama player just took one to the house. And then Five this. yard penalty, nice. set first down. Blake Anderson's aging as, as we speak. Blake Anderson hasn't felt uh, 
this behind the eight ball since his Baylor team lost 66 10 to your Houston team. That was a score right 1989. Yeah, looked uh, yeah it was I don't know if he was on that team but Trooper Taylor certainly was was on that team. Well Blake told us he was with Baylor for a couple of years and then he yeah. transferred out and I think you might have done it to him. 66 10. I remember it well. But you just saw the Arkansas State success man it's a program that's been to seven straight bowls. They've had all different head coaches who've gone on to bigger and better things. He's done a nice job of putting this thing together in terms of scholarships and rebuilding the program. Still about 11 scholarships shy. Here's the game-breaking play they wanted from Armand Weiwei all the way way into Alabama territory. 40-plus yards on the run, the biggest play of the day for Arkansas State. Yeah, missed last year with an injury, but... Way, way here, getting behind a couple of big offensive linemen, breaking some tackles. Broke the tackle of Mac Wilson, the middle linebacker, on his way to a big, big game. You say big, big game because his name is Way Way? <laughs> <laughs> is that intentional? Purely by accident. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do it again. We're very, very sorry. On Way Way, the senior to Houston. This is Roy Wan in the game. And a good run on first down of five as Arkansas State starts to move the ball. P.I. loves Arkansas State. Projected to win the Sun Belt West Division. Projected to be the Sun Belt champions. First year of two divisions for the Sun Belt. Shot here is incomplete. Kendrick Edwards could not haul it in along the sideline battling with Trayvon Diggs. That's one that you got to throw it. Go ahead and throw it up the field if you're. Justice Hansen, not fade him away. He's already got a step on the defensive back where he's behind the defender. And I think it was Smith. Saving on Smith in that instance, but you got to go ahead and throw him into the end zone. Don't fade him away. That's the difference in a completion and one being and one going out of bounds. It out of the flats and he missed an easy one to Warren Wan. I think you got to go for it here from Blake Anderson. It's your best penetration offensively the entire day. The fourth down and five. You got to go ahead and roll the dice here late in the first half. No other choice at this point. No doubt. Anderson just seven of 21 in the game. Arkansas State team that passed for 342 a game last year. That was fifth best in the nation. Hanson, complete first down, Omar Bayless. Nice job, timed well. Sitting in the pocket and then delivering a strike. Nick Saban not through. Didn't like it so much. Does Nick Saban coach harder when his team is up 40, do you think? I think he just doesn't like mistakes. And so you give up a fourth and five where, in his mind, you should be off the field. He does not like mental mistakes. And that was one of the first things that he brought up yesterday when we sat down with him and had a chance to visit. Way too many in last week's game. The quick hitter for Hanson. This is Brandon Bowling, his first catch to the 20. Check in with Chris Cotter once more. Chris, what you got? Odds on whether Cotter got his workout in this morning. I know he's in the studio really early. If he's getting his workout, if he got it already, or if he's, he's getting it at the end of today, my okay. bet is that he already had it. He's already worked out. About two to one that he already did it. Already worked out, no doubt. After the third down run, that's Isaiah Bugs, awfully talented senior for Alabama. 
It's fourth down coming up. Hanson just a little bit short of that first down line again. And we'll check on Isaiah Bucks when we return to Tuscaloosa. Isaiah Bugs able to walk off under his own power. They're checking on him, the training staff on the Alabama sideline. Bugs off the field for another fourth down, second attempt of the drive on fourth down for Arkansas State. Marshall Murray, the freshman, next to Justice Hansen. And here we go. High snap, Hanson flung it to Kirk Merritt, who was nearly intercepted. They are sitting on everything. Xavier McKinney was right there. Which is amazing to me that you content, they continue trying it. They are set up for pump and goes, but will not do it. McKinney is just re reads this thing out perfectly. They miss the block. And luckily, lucky for Arkansas State, that's not the second interception returned for a touchdown. That was a pick six if he hangs on to that, and he knows it. Now, well, after a couple of successful drives for Jalen Hurts, Tua Tungabailoa returns to quarterback for Alabama. What a first quarter he had. Three touchdowns in the first quarter for Tungabailoa on six completions. Hand off here. Damian Harris. I just wonder what to what was he doing to keep himself ready to go back in, staying loose and things of that sort. Because sometimes it gets tough. You go to the sideline and you sit for uh, three series, that's tough. Handoffs to start for Tunga by Laura. You've been a quarterback. What do you do when you're on the sidelines for a while? How do you stay fresh? Well, a stationary bike, and I just believed in throwing. Anytime the defense was on the field uh, and it got past a three and out, I was up for throwing the football. Because you just want to make sure that you stay loose. Uh, you're in a high, what was deemed as a high powered offense, and you knew you were going to go right back out at some point and start slinging the ball around. Under pressure, Tua gets it away. That's complete, but well shy of a first down for Henry Riggs. And Alabama will punt for the second time. And a nice play by B.J. Edmonds. We talk about missing open field tackles on a couple of occasions where this defense has given up touchdowns. It's a nice job by Edmonds. A heck of a receiver in the open field. Talented youngster. Boy, they got him. Smith, Ruggs, Judy, Waddle. And Irv Smith, the big fella, not to be outdone, has a touchdown catch of his own from the tight end spot. Maybe the best collective group they've had. That's what Nick Saban told us. Skyler DeLong just got hit, and there are two flags out at the end of that. Damari Medley came crashing into DeLong. It would be enough to give Alabama a first down in this. Rough in the punter of running into the punter. It was a fourth and five. Very close. I don't know if you're a defensive player for So I suppose that would not have been enough to give Alabama first down fourth and five could have been fourth and 5.9 and Nick Saban got the explanation declined the penalty after the punt but to have to go back out on the field if you're the defense if that were the case a little upset I'll we'll see if Alabama can keep the first half shutout. Crimson Tide were a, a monster favorite in this game, to no surprise. 37-point favorite Alabama in this game, and they are up 40 
under two minutes to go from the half. We figured Alabama would come out animated because of the way last week ended. Yes, they won by 37, but Nick Saban was frustrated with some penalties, some missed opportunities. And they have been as advertised in their home opener. Hanson to the sideline on first down. Warren won. The running back across midfield. First down, Arkansas State, a gain of 14. Nice job there by Hanson to get it out and get it to Warren Wan when, it, when he's on the run where he can make a, one move, get up the field, and pick up the first down. Super quick player out in space and tough to bring down. And a great day for this defense, so a couple of takeaways. Nearly a third last drive. Hanson sacked twice and pressured a whole lot more. Back on the ground, Warren Wan. He is easy to lose in there. 5'5", 184. Preseason first team all conference. He plays like he's 6'2", about 220. With a big, big heart. And the coaches rave about, about him. He's had a great career. 14th among active players in FBS. In career rush yards headed into this year, over 2,300. Hanson throws it to McKinnis off his back foot. And Justin McKinnis has it for a first down at the 35, 11 yards. And Arkansas State's on the move with a minute two to go. Nice job here by McKinnis to climb the ladder and make this play. Sets up Sertan and then bringing that baby in with a, a defensive back draped all over him. That's good work. Using the size to his advantage. Hanson pressured here. Christian Miller off the edge. Heaves it to the end zone. Incomplete. Space for Jay Adams. Oh, just a little bit in the back. With Trayvon Diggs trying to run him down. And Hanson could not connect. He did a nice job of buying himself some time. As he got pressure right away inside. And still able to get outside of the pocket. And at least get one up. To Jonathan Adams. Adams a big strong receiver. Showed value early in the red zone in last week's ball game, catching a touchdown pass. He's got good speed as well at 4-4, so you see why he was able to get behind the secondary of Alabama there. And second down, Hanson will run it. Stumbles down to the 30. Time is ticking here. Arkansas State with just the one remaining timeout. Go ahead and take it. it. Yeah. Smart to take it because you need the time rather than the downs here. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year. You know, Alabama's student section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and see how your school can Favorite student section for you? What do you think? Been in the SEC for a few years. What's the what's the toughest one to face? That's a good question. I think always anytime you go into to Ole Miss, that's a tough one. Yeah. Tough student section. Alabama there. will be going there next week. Yeah, it'll, it's always a tough game. Always a a game where a lot of points and somehow made their way on the scoreboard. Miss has a couple of wins against Bama the last few years. Of course, last year Alabama won comfortably 66-3. to On third down, Hanson. Well short of a first down. Good open field play by Xavier McKinney with a stop on Kirk Merritt. And a fourth down coming up. We'll see if Arkansas State gets to the line quickly enough with a wide receiver currently down. That's Kirk Merritt. Well, hey, he's the fastest offensive weapon so you would hate to lose him well an injury just stopped the clock Arkansas State no timeouts so there it is 10 second runoff stops or 10 second runoff added because the clock stopped at an injury and Arkansas State did not have a timeout subtracted 10 seconds and that's the half so first half, we're just about everything went wrong for Arkansas State. Ends on a 10-second injury runoff. 
You're watching College Football on ESPN, presented by Exxon Mobil. The defending national champions are playing like the defending national champions. All 40 of the first half points for the Crimson Tide as they lead Arkansas State. Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware and Alex Cordry. I'm Kevin Brown. We thank you for being with us from Tuscaloosa. And if you're an Alabama fan, you're going to enjoy this Pacific Life game summary. The two quarterbacks, Tua Tunga by Loa, Jalen Hurts, have both played rather well, Andre, in his first half. Yeah, 21 snaps for Tua, 180 yards passing, and three touchdowns. He was magical in that area. I think the uh, receivers helped him out as well, breaking tackles, getting into the end zone. That was just dynamic, just carving up Arkansas State's defense. And then Jalen Hurts came in the ball game and led him right down the field. A big touchdown pass to his tight end, Irv Smith. Took one right in the chops before hitting Jerry Judy on his second touchdown throw of the, the first half. Both guys looked outstanding, in my opinion. Four different pass catchers with touchdown grabs in the first half. Jerry Judy had two. Devontae Smith, Irv Smith, and Henry Ruggs with the touchdown catches for Alabama. Also, Savion Smith, a pick six. Nick Saban had some things to clean up, of course, as he always does. But Alabama is comfortably ahead. A couple of missed extra points in that first half. Had to change kickers and some defensive miscommunications. But a 40-point lead is tough to quibble with, though he's going to do it if anybody will. Alabama right. looking to win its 75th in a row against unranked teams. He's looking to shoot 59. That's the equivalent in terms of yep. you know what he wants from his football team you know in a golf reference that's kind of the score 59 where everybody breaks or wants to break 60. Now his offense might shoot 59 today <laughs> at this pace <laughs> as no well. Doubt. Fair catch made by Damari Medley. New rule this year you can make a fair catch and a kickoff inside your 25 and the ball will go out to the 25 yard line. It becomes a touchback even if the ball is in the field of play. Hey let's check in with Chris Cotter. <laughs> yeah, this is an awesome day of sports. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Serena Williams, who was one grand slam win shy of tying Mark Accord in some real trouble. Match point in Ash right now. Mark Bayless, a catch of 14. So yeah. we understand if you go over for one point, come back and join us as there is quite a development. Naomi Osaka looking to win the U.S. Open in its tennis. First drive of the half for Arkansas State. Warren Wan on first down. Almost a couple a of yards. Changing of the guard in that deal. Yeah. Serena's been so dominant for so long. And I know this is kind of a comeback. I don't know if a lot of people expected her to be at this point in this stage. But so Osaka is just taking care of business in the U.S. Open, women's U.S. Open. Justice Hansen on second down, knocked away. Patrick Sertan, the second the true freshman corner with the breakup. And is Naomi Osaka winning, by the way? We just received word. Naomi Osaka defeats Serena Williams to win the United States Open. That is huge that? for her career. No doubt about it. Men's final tomorrow. Novak Djokovic and Juan Martin Del Potro. And uh, prime time tonight. You'll hear Reese Davis with her being a and because Chris Fowler's in Queens calling the U.S. Open. And join us once again on college football next weekend. Third and eight for Arkansas State. Hanson runs away from pressure, needs midfield for a first down, and he goes for it, diving across the midfield line to move the ch uh, move the chains for Arkansas State. Well, I, I love unselfish players, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And Kendrick Edwards, the wide receiver to the left side of the formation, 
threw a nice block that allowed Hanson to pick up that first down. Just an excellent block working against Savion Smith. Hanson with a backwards pass. Here's a throwback from Darby on Brown to Hanson, and he's got all sorts of room. Hanson taken down from behind by Deontay Thompson. Arkansas State down 40 goes to the back page of the playbook for 25 yards. I think against anybody else, this may be a house call, but they get the time necessary to make this work. And Deontay Thompson, you got to take your hat off to him. He comes out of nowhere to make a big, big play. Hanson, first down throw is short, incomplete for Kendrick Edwards. Once again, down here in a, an opportunity to get points. Arkansas State premium to, it's at a premium now to hang on to the football, don't turn it over, force it into a, a small area where this thing gets tipped and intercepted. And once, you, once you make a catch, you got to secure the catch and make sure you don't put it on the ground. Hanson has space over the middle, and Arkansas State's Kendrick Edwards has a touchdown. That, Kevin, is what this Arkansas State offense is capable of doing. Early in the game, they had a lot of openings like this. And you see here the offensive line just trying to get those hands down up front to to give Justice Hansen a throwing lane, and he delivers to Kendrick Edwards. That unselfish block, my friend, on the edge to help pick up the first down, keep the chains moving. He was repaid for that, baby. It's the left tackle, Leonard Bonner. Might be their best NFL prospect. Took down Raekwon Davis. 19th straight game with a touchdown toss for Justice Hansen. Red Wolves on the board. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to that university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. All extra points today. Bama's missed a couple, made four. Arkansas State's made one. A touchdown for the Red Wolves on their last drive. A 23-yard pass. Kendrick Edwards, the Arkansas transfer from Justice Hanson. Here's a short kick. Arkansas State goes on side. Ball's got to go 10 yards. Might as well try it down 40 to 7. But Alabama has the football. Keaton Anderson, reserve defensive back, was out there and ready. A heads up play by that young man. As, you know, everybody's usually set up for a return, and he's. Trying to get back to get to a point on the field and stays at home. You see him right there reading things out and then going right to the football. The bottom of the pile and it's a good job. There's two a tonga by Lloyd, Damian Harris, quarterback running back to start this first drive of the second half. First Alabama quarterback in six years since A.J. McCarron with three touchdown throws in the first quarter. It's a different kind of arm, isn't it, Andre, you're out here with <laughs> Tunga Bailoa? It's a generational arm. I mean, he is that that talented of, of a passer. And, and scary if you're a defender and you, you're on the other side trying to defend him. Escapes the rush, and he's a pretty good athlete, too. Got a good block. Tunga Bailoa rumbles for a first down, and Henry Ruggs Laid down an excellent block on the outside. Yeah, people, on the run. You, you, you forget that he's as mobile as as he is and athle as athletic as he is, but here it gets flushed out of the pocket. And, I mean, he is, he is not afraid to run. He is a willing runner when he pulls it down. It's just infrequent because the arm talent is so big. Tasha Chambers is down. He was blocked by Ruggs on the play. And he is down. The linebacker 
He's had so many injuries in his career. Redshirt sophomore for Arkansas State. Yeah, you just get so caught up in the arm talent of Tua that you forget he can he can throw he can run like this and right there there's the the block that leads to the injury it's good to see that young man chambers get up and off the field I say chambers season ending injuries in his second game as a freshman and his fourth game last year he's Got a couple of years of eligibility left. Planted his sixth year already. And his potential, they think, is through the roof. He started as uh, as a true freshman. But those injuries kind of piled up. And torn ACL. But just a good, clean block by Henry Ruggs the third there. Damian Harris, handoff from under center at a first down play. Well, Tua Tungabailoa is making his second career start, and he's already the Heisman favorite, according to the Westgate Las Vegas Superbook. Ahead of Will Greer, Trace McSorley. It's week two. All right, this is a little much. I understand that. Yeah, a little much, but a little much. I, I think Jonathan Taylor, 33 carries, 245 yards. Bunch of touchdowns today, and then Kyler Murray, who is getting no respect whatsoever at Oklahoma. Same team, same receivers that Baker Mayfield threw to. He goes 19 to 33 today, 306 and three touchdowns. Uh, I think he ran for two as well. Got to throw his name in there. You gonna be this early with it? With odds and favorites, Kyler Murray deserves to be in that conversation. We'll let Oklahoma play a good defense first before he fully gets in, I think, but I hear you. Florida Atlantic, UCLA in the first two, that very young Chip Kelly team. Here's Herb Smith, he's shy of a first down by about a yard and a half. Sets up fourth and short for Alabama. And either way, two is gonna stay on the field. If they go for it as quarterback, if they kick it, he's the holder. And Tua wanted to go for it there. Did not hold before he came to Alabama to a tongue of Iloa. Nick Saban told us that Tua and Mac Jones, his two holders, neither of them held in high school. Fewer and fewer quarterbacks seem to hold. He explained to us that it's usually a punter's job. And here's Joseph Bulibus from 39. The snap, the hold, the kick were all good. Looks like Joseph Bulibus has won the job today. Austin Jones missed a couple of PATs. Joe's been perfect. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Audi. Fun first home day of the season for Alabama's faithful. Last time they were at home was about 300 days ago, beat Mercer. Between those two home games, not much has happened. <laughs> it's the national yeah. championship. Loss in the Iron Bowl, quarterback Ex Another change, excellent, championship. excellent class signed to this already talented program. 17 national titles, maybe more to come. Damari Medley from his own 10 for Arkansas State. Gets across the 25, down to the 30. Alabama ended last year number one. They start this year number one. Our college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. In progress right now, some big ones. Andre Georgia with a 27-10 lead at South Carolina. Yeah, also Ohio State, Notre Dame, Washington. Kind of expected that one. The one I'm I'm waiting on tonight, though, Clemson and at Texas A&M. I, you know, I played there. That's as tough a place to play in in all of college football, but Clemson just so talented on defense, and they got two pretty good quarterbacks of their own. Yeah, the question, who's going to be the ultimate quarterback for them? Kelly Bryant, who led them to the college football playoff last year, or Trevor Lawrence, who is about as polished a freshman quarterback as you're gonna see in the nation. 
Both played against Furman last week, and we'll probably know a little bit more about that Clemson situation in a much more competitive game tonight. Just as Hanson, the quarterback here, and a sidearm sling to Kirk Merritt. And wriggles free to set up third and short. Nice job of running there after the catch by Kirk Merritt. Good to see him back on the field right before the half. He got up a little slow. And actually caused the runoff to get us to halftime, but 4-3 speed in the slot. I mentioned as well, he's their fastest offensive player, so trying to find ways to get him the football. Third and three. Hanson pressured. It was big. Quinnen Williams coming out the middle. The nose guard, who was awesome last week against Louisville, had three and a half tackles for loss in that game. He is so active in the middle of their defense. The coaches just rave about this sophomore. He can play anywhere along the defensive line and pretty good pass rusher from that, that spot as well. He has earned the right to start after last season and had two where he had two sacks in 2017. Race to punt it, Jalen Waddle with just one return today for a loss of four. And Grace has been ridiculous punting for Arkansas State. His last three punts, 52, 53, and 54, all with a fair catch on the end. The brand new ESPN app, now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Second possession of the second half for Alabama. Great halftime performance we heard from the Million Dollar Band. It was a huge ovation when 2017 National Championship flag was run out of the field. The 17th in tied history. Jalen Hurts watching the second drive of the half. Tua Tunga Vailoa has got them both. New starting quarterback here in 2018. And he gives it to Josh Jacobs. Big one tonight, just a couple of hours away at this point, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, number two Clemson on the road at Texas A&M. Dabo Sweeney and Jimbo Fisher match up in non-conference action. A couple of Clemson quarterbacks likely to see the field. It's live in the ESPN app. That's Watch the one I'm waiting to see tonight. Pretty good football players going to compete in that one. Second down run for Jacobs. You'll see a lot of these backup running backs. Jacobs and Robinson for Alabama in this half. We're going to get a face mask call here to, to give Alabama a first down. Doesn't take much. And I think they got right in the face mask. And Jacobs may have take, taken a finger in the eye. Good to see him help. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Battle some hamstring injuries. Now finally healthy and contributing, and you see that one's easy for the officials to see and throw the flag. Jerry Jacobs, face mask penalty for Arkansas State. Jerry Jacobs on Josh Jacobs there. Little Jacobs on Jacobs' crime. Talk about all off the fake to the sideline incomplete. Well, Alabama, when I talked to Michael Loxley, their offensive coordinator, he had a couple of keys he wanted to establish in this game, and that was to get off to a fast start. That's a check. Establish the running game and knock guys off the ball. That's a check. And then to hit shots down the field when they were there. And that's a check. So they have checked all the boxes here early in this ball game. Nick Saban told us that he thought they started a little bit slowly in the run game last week against Louisville. Much better off the start today. Rungabailoa has an open man and floated it a little bit. So Devontae Smith hits the ground. This new offensive coordinator yet again for Alabama. It was Lane Kiffin, it was briefly Steve Sarkeesian, Brian Dable, and 
now Michael Loxley. Excellent play caller. And as I mentioned earlier, in terms of setting a defense up for what he initially wants to get to. But, uh, he did a heck of a job at Illinois as their offensive coordinator with Juice Williams taking him to an Aurelius Ben, taking him to a Rose Bowl. Good football coach. How far in a concept that seems now, Illinois in a Rose Bowl. What teams he had there. Talk about all it takes off as the first down. Not afraid to lower his shoulder in the open field. Up by 36 and not playing like it. A run of 13. It's not in his DNA to slide. I mean, he is a tough, tough competitor. And he wants to bring it to you instead of you teeing off on him. And he is built. The lower body is extremely strong. He is why he can get so much velocity on a football. And he's not going to shy away from defenders. Under pressure here. Got rid of it somehow. There's a flag in the backfield. There's an Arkansas State player without a helmet. Oh, Bingham lost his helmet. We may find out why. Holding number 22 offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Najee Harris. Call for the holding. Time to check in with Alex Cordry downstairs. Alex. Kevin Andre Jonah Williams was telling us that this Alabama offense wants to be a force to be reckoned with. Predominantly, Alabama has been known for their defenses, but they feel like they can really change the narrative. They said Loxley has put a premium on this attitude for the offense. Yeah, attitude offensively to match the intensity and the attitude of their defense, which you know is going to be there each and every game. But Loxley likes to play fast. He likes to speed up the tempo. He's going to be aggressive. And I think you're starting to see that somewhat shine through with this Alabama offense. He is putting his, uh, his stamp on it, so to speak, which every, every play caller seems or is eventually going to do. Nice attitude at the end of that run by Najee Harris, shoving his way for 11. And he's got the big left tackle, Jonah Williams. Junior, who is maybe a top 10, top 5 pick in next year's NFL draft. Listen to folks in the know. All American player at left tackle out of Folsom, California. Here's the catch at a turn for Jacobs. First and long in a couple of plays to a first down. They've got some studs in the trenches. Ross Pierce Baker. Gone from left guard to right guard to center. 42 starts at other positions before moving to center. And Jonah Williams got as good as they come at left tackle. He has value everywhere. It's going to be very attractive to an NFL roster. We got to spend some time with Jonah Williams yesterday. <laughs> and yeah, and I asked him, I said, what, were you, what, what did you want to improve on? You know, just individually. And he said, yeah, I wanted to get a little stronger, get my bench press over 500, and prompted me to see. next question was, well, what is it? 525 on the bench, and then 600 plus on the squat for this three-year starter on Alabama's offensive line. He is a talented young man. He's going to be on some NFL roster next season. That's how you get Andre Ware arms. <laughs> Screen pass set up for Jacobs. Breaks a couple of tackles. Third and long coming up. You know, Jonah, we asked him uh, when he figured out what he was coming into with all the talent here yeah. in Alabama. Graduated high school early. When Jonah Williams comes to Tuscaloosa, he walks into the facilities at noon with his bags the first day he's here. And by 3 o'clock, he said, I'm playing scout team preparing for the national championship against Clemson. It doesn't well, take long. That's a wake-up call. <laughs> Injured player for Arkansas State, Donovan Ransom. We'll check on him when we come back. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. 
Donovan Ransom went off the field after the injury for Arkansas State, able to get to the sideline for this third and four. Nick Saban's Crimson Tide on their longest drive of the day. Three minutes and 34 seconds. Nine plays. They have scored lightning quick in every other scenario. Jeremy Jacobs, Josh Jacobs, beg your pardon, is the running back on a third and four. For Tua Tungavailoa. Clean pocket, clean delivery, clean catch by Jacobs. First down, Alabama. And you see the accuracy with Tua on that play out in front and low, away from the defender where only Josh Jacobs is going to catch this football. Here, a nice hit. Once he gets to the top, the ball's out, and it's low and away from the defender into the hands of Jacobs. Back on the ground, Harris with a first down run. Ooh, punishing run. It's a grown man run right there. Harris just a sophomore. He called last year mentally challenging. He did not play too much in big spots until that national title game. He led them with 65 rushing yards on six carries late. Get it back here. Big hole for Harris. Then he creates a second one with a juke. Down to the 11 before Mike Johnson made the stop. Now you're starting to see the imprint of Michael Loxley on this offense and recognizing the playmakers knowing that Najee Harris has a hot hand and he's going to feed him. But, you know, I think every young back, if you're a five-star athlete, you do what Najee Harris did in high school naturally. There's going to be some disappointment with not having as much playing time, but I understand there's some talented players here. It is the ultimate what if. What if in that national title game, Jalen Hurts plays the whole game? What if Najee Harris doesn't get in late? Najee admitted he was you know, mentally frustrated by last year. A lot of folks know about this. Tua back in May was back home in Hawaii talking to students, said he was asking his dad at one point thinking about transferring if he didn't play in the title game and of course all those what ifs are things of the past right now it's Tua leading the offense Harris on the ground and the dynamic players for Alabama are not just excellent athletes they're excellent young athletes they're sophomores and freshmen and the offensive sure. future here is, is absurdly bright I think on both sides it's a younger defensive unit and they've got enough talent on the offensive side to carry things until this defense comes along the way Coach Saban wants it to. But hey, you're right, there is a ton of talent on the offensive side and a lot of toys for my man Loxley to play with. Might not be tested for a while. They go to Ole Miss next week, but Ole Miss is in a real struggle right now. Went over Texas Tech last week. Still with Southern Third Illinois today. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That last we saw was a 38 35 Southern Illinois lead at the half at Ole Miss. And the real tough games come later in the schedule for Alabama, and they may have that benefit of letting the young defense grow until they get LSU, until they get Mississippi State and Auburn in their last four games of the season. Well, they just started there. Part of the second half of that one in Oxford, and it is still 38-35, Southern Illinois. Tied have it awesome on third down again. Tunga by Loa to the end zone. Side of the end zone, reeled in by Derek Keith. Touchdown tied. These are the throws that if you see this kid in practice, these are the ones where you ooh and ah about Tonga's talent. Excuse me, Tonga Valoa's talent. Tua is, I mean, it's amazing. Stepping up into the pocket under duress, and there, only his receiver is going to catch that one and catch it inbounds. They may take a look at this one. But look at the window that he squeezes that in. Now, oh, there's no doubt that's a touchdown. What a throw. Just waiting for confirmation on the field right now. 
O'Keefe with his eighth career catch, second touchdown. Senior who played in every game last year, but primarily on special teams, a good special teams player. They're getting in on the receiving side of it. 51 points last week for Bama. And one shy of that right now. 13 of 19. Four scores for Tua Tungabailoa. It's week one of the NFL season. It's week one of Monday night football. 7-10 Eastern. Sam Darnold and the Jets are in Detroit. Ben Bowens, Brian Greasy, Laura Rutledge will be there. And then our brand new Monday night crew. Joe Tess, Jason Witt, Booger, and Lisa. The Rams against John Gruden and the Raiders in Oakland at 10-15 Eastern. Both games simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish. Raiders have a little crimson flavor. A.J. McCarron just acquired by Oakland. Amari Cooper, those two have a history. I remember this from five years ago. 99-yard touchdown in a game that Alabama fans would otherwise like to forget. That put him up 28-21 in the Iron Bowl that ended in Chris Davis's kick six. Gotta figure out a way to get Coop the ball a little bit more. So dynamic after the catch that I just don't know that they get him the ball enough. Well, here's a young man who's got just about everybody the ball. Four touchdowns for Tonga Bailoa so far for Alabama. I think this day likely to be done. I mean, you were here at practice a couple of days ago. You're now seeing him in live action in the game. When you see his arm, what do you think? What comparisons? What comes into your head? I don't know that I've seen anything quite like it, to be quite honest with you, in, in terms of the entire package. You know, based on his body language and when he approaches the line of scrimmage, when the ball is snapped, he knows exactly what he's doing in the play call. So it's, it allows him to get through reads quickly. So you know between the ears, he's, he's put together there in terms of being in sync with what Loxley's calling. Then you go to the physical gifts of where he throws the ball, the velocity he throws the ball with, the accuracy, being able to put it in spots that other guys just can't do. There's only a handful of guys on the next level that can do what this kid's doing. I mean, I mean, you threw for 420 yards a game in college. If you're telling oh, and me I wish I had that arm. Anything, and no I wish kidding. I had that arm talent. No wow. doubt. Alex, you have more? Andre, Kevin, will you all talk about how Tua has ignited this offense, but he also motivates the team with his magnetic personality. Talking to Jonah Williams and Jerry Judy, they say that he's the funniest teammate that they have. They said even in the huddle, he keep, keeps things loose. Even if it's a fourth and one critical situation, Tua is all smiles. Yeah, Alex, it, it, it's, it's a deal where the, you feel his energy when you break the huddle. You can just watch him practice, you feel it. You see him approach the line of scrimmage in a game, you feel it. And so you know that his teammates actually feel the same thing that you're feeling as a fan or as a spectator. Then, you know, this part of it is so engaging with fans and teammates. Yeah, you can tell when a guy is approaching the line of scrimmage and he's not totally confident in either the play call or what he's going to do at the quarterback position. That's not to him. Justice Hanson, meanwhile, with a pass slightly behind and off the hands of Justin McKittis, and Arkansas State goes three and out once more. It took, as I mentioned in the early, it took me about five minutes yeah. to figure out just how special this guy was. And I went in, I'm like, you know, I'm going to reserve judgment. I don't buy into what everybody else is saying. I want to see it for myself. And four minutes of that was they were warming up and getting stretched out. The other minute was like, wow. And seeing him place the football, it's a thing of beauty. Is that what impresses you most, the placement? I think so. And just the entire grasp on what they do offensively, it allows them to play with a tremendous amount of confidence. And with the physical gifts mixed, mixed with that, that's scary. Jalen Waddle finally has a chance to return a punt, but not much. Another booming kick from Cody Grace. 43 yards, no return. It gives Alabama an element around here that they just haven't had in a while. When they can just open up a game, spread you out, and let the athletes take over, that's scary. And you know, you forget about his ability to make plays with his legs. I've been impressed with Jalen Hurts 
watching him as well, even last week's game, he's gotten much better as a quarterback. There's no doubt about, about it that his game has improved. And I think the competition has done that to him or for him. Tim Hurts has the huddle for the first time in the second half. Quarterback keeper. These are two awesome athletes. Tonga Bailoa and Hurts. A couple of touchdown tosses for Jalen. Today's moved him into third all-time in passing touchdowns in Alabama program history. Came into today with over 6,700 yards of total offense in just two seasons here in Tuscaloosa. A lot of production from that young man, Jalen Hurts. Final play, third quarter. Hertz will tuck it and run again. Show off those legs. <laughs> he backpedals out of bounds. Smart decision there for 15. He's dynamic in his own right. Excellent dual threat uh, quarterback. Scott Cochran knows what time it is. Time of the fourth quarter program for the Crimson Tide. First three of been pretty good too. They're well trained here in Tuscaloosa after three quarters. You hold the four fingers high. It is a Scott Cochran specialty. The magnetic strength and conditioning coach for the Crimson Tide has been with Nick Saban for every one of his national titles. Institutes the fourth quarter program. He holds four fingers up during the entire period. You know it by now if you're an Alabama fan, how well conditioned these kids are at the end. Everything they do in the offseason, yeah. everything they do during the season is for this express goal of wearing teams down, dominating the end of the game, and they're off to a good start with Najee Harris. And it's so you can finish runs like this late in the ball game in the fourth quarter, Harris after all of that dodging guys and breaking tackles, he's able to leap one and get right back in the huddle and ask Loxley to come right back to him again. Jalen Hurts pressured. Got rid of it to Harris off the hands incomplete. Scott Cochran is certainly well known around these parts for his Intensity, a lot of fun, colorful personality. People call him the Yin to Nick Saban's Yang. He became I'm, even more well known this offseason with the Training Day Show and uh, the Origins podcast in Alabama as well. I was there a season or so ago and in the weight room working out, and he was on me. I mean, <laughs> no kidding. You hear that raspy voice <laughs> getting on me, getting after me to, to pick it up. Did it motivate you? Of course it does. Hurts all day to throw on second down. That's Jerry nice. Judy. A couple of touchdowns early for him. It's an excellent throw. One hash to the other. He's done it again a you know, second time in the ball game in the second quarter, and he comes right back to Judy here in the in the fourth. And that takes some arm strength to stretch it all the way across the field from one hash mark to the sideline. Third down, Harris with a truck-sized hole through the middle initially, and finally banged out of bounds Ooh. at the five by Derek Bean. 19 yards and a hard hit by the freshman at the end. I mean, he brought some lumber to Najee Harris's doorstep. Swinging on it. You often get lumber brought to your doorstep? <laughs> He brought it in. From Kinson, Alabama, Derek Bean's about 90 minutes northeast of here. They, they describe him as a physical player who can play sideline to sideline, and that's exactly what it what it took there then to bring down Najee Harris. And he arrived in an ugly way. Harris 11 rushes, 133 yards, and averaging over 12 yards a tote. Good day for that young man. 
They'd like a rushing touchdown, though. This is bad news for Arkansas State. That's Justin Clifton, who is a first-team all-conference preseason player and such a valuable player at nickelback. He is limping on that Red Wolves sideline. Second team all Sun Belt a year ago and was a Thorpe Award on the watch list last year as well. Harry South, Brian Robinson is in the game at running back. On first and goal, Hertz will keep it. Come up short. Down to the two. That's, he almost lost the football again. You get down here, you know you're going to take a shot to make sure you've got three points of pressure and that offhand on the football covering it up. You got another player, Darian, Ed, Darian Jackson, that's down. They don't want to lose him. He is versatile in the secondary and can play just about anywhere in Blake Anderson's defense. You saw this a little bit with Louisville last week. It's just a physical beatdown when you play Alabama. Yeah. Hope that Darian Jackson's okay. We'll check when we return to Tuscaloosa. Our Pacific Life game summary is understandably one-sided with Alabama all over Arkansas State. Again, a Red Wolves team that was receiving votes, picked to win the Sun Belt. But Tonga Bailo and Hertz have been superb through the air. Savion Smith has a pick six, and Alabama has been dominant. Could be more first and Yeah, goal Xavier left. McKinney dropped the pick yeah. six. I mean, now he had one that was gifted. I couldn't hold on to it. And a second to go play back to Najee Harris. They don't have a rushing touchdown yet, Alabama. Harris trying to change that, and he is marked down shot. I thought he was in. Again, or on that play, just mark him just shy of the end zone. Breaking tackles. Great call. Great call there. One update, by the way, Darian Jackson did walk off the field after the injury before he went to break. So third down, Harris, and he'll stroll in. Najee Harris with his fifth career touchdown and Alabama's first rushing score of the afternoon. What a machine. I mean, they can do it just about any way they want to. They can physically beat you down with Damian Harris and Najee Harris along with Josh Jacobs. Don't forget Brian Robinson. I'm sure we're going to see him here shortly, but four deep at running back and then all the receivers, two quarterbacks. It's amazing. 135 on the ground for Harris. Just 13 carries. ESPN College Football is presented by the unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. Energy lives here. And in part by Mazda. Feel alive. Another superb day offensively for Alabama. Najee Harris, the latest touchdown score in the day where there have been quite a few of them. 57 points against this Arkansas State team picked to win the Sun Belt. And Alabama well on its way to 2-0. and Will be a 17th straight home opening win. And a 75th straight win against an unranked team. That is by far and away the NCAA record. Texas A&M and Clemson are coming up tonight. Kick is at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Well, we're 24 minutes away from that. Getting close. Number two in the country going down to see Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher's Aggies passed their first test. That first test was Northwestern State. Not quite Clemson. That was on Thursday night in a big win. We'll see what they can do tonight. The 12th man against Last year's number one team going into the college football playoff. Jimbo Fisher joins the SEC. He's a Nick Saban assistant. So is Will Muschamp at South Carolina. Jeremy Pruitt, first-year head coach at Tennessee. Kirby Smart at Georgia. Nick Saban said it. 
in training days with the Tide. Our four-part pregame look into Alabama training camp this year. Everybody's trying to find out what we do. People are hiring folks from our organization, hiring coaches to find out what it is that makes it work here. Tennessee is the latest to try to replicate the secret sauce with Jeremy Pruitt. It's, it's players. Often imitated, never duplicated. It's players and way. player development. And, and you continue, you get five stars, but you continue to develop them, and they get better each and every year that they're on campus. That's the, that's the secret, which isn't much of a secret, but they coach them up pretty good here. That last catch made by Reed Tyler with Logan Bonner, the backup quarterback, into the game for Arkansas State. On the ground, Warren Wand with the breakaway run across the 45 in the Bama territory. There's a true freshman who made the last catch, who has a connection to this place, Reed Tyler, out of Brandon, Mississippi. His grandfather, Bob, was an assistant here at Alabama under Bear Bryant. Also a head coach, 1973 to 78 at Mississippi State. There is Grandpa Bob with the Bear. One year assistant at Alabama. The Tyler family with some deep SEC roots. Bob was here in Alabama in 1970. Took over Mississippi State's offensive coordinator job and the head coaching job. And they're the proud grandparents, Bob and Dale with their grandson, a first-year Division I college football player in the second game for Arkansas State. And they like him a lot as a true freshman with size. Armand Weiwei had a big play on this drive for the Red Wolves. Oh, what? A couple of times they've gotten him the ball. He's turned them into big games, so that may be a plan as they you know, continue down the 2018 season be an option for them to get him the ball a little bit more. Bonner going end zone and overthrown in search of Kendrick Edwards with a touchdown catch earlier. Logan Bonner in the game for Justice Hansen. It was not the day that Arkansas State hoped offensively. Hansen under a lot of pressure. Bonner came in last week and and was sharp, 66% on the day, two of three, and then threw for 74 yards and had a touchdown. That's a good quick math by you with the percentage. I like that. I'll write it down. <laughs> Give him my secret. The secret's out, folks. Andre knows how to write his notes. That is nearly intercepted. Daniel Wright, sophomore, three safety, got his hands on it. Two players. Right, and then one more in the vicinity. This is where Alabama builds depth, right? They win these blowout games. You get to run the second and third stringers in late. Yep, and, and all of a sudden, those players, if there's an injury, they've played before, so the moment's not too, too big for them. It's a great luxury as you get through the schedule and get into the A&Ms or they'll see here been a couple weeks and the Auburns and LSU's valuable. They're basically all blue chippers here in Tuscaloosa. They're down run for one. He has the first and goal set up down to the three yard line. Oh, nice open field tackle by Daniel Wright. Tough to get to Juan. The fourth. He's able to track him down. Juan's a quick player. Shows some power at times. Bonner took a hit as he threw it. Smart to play. the target. Knowing the situation, down in distance. And yet on this point in the field, decisions have to be sped up. You gotta get rid of the football a little bit quicker. Anticipation in the red zone is at a premium. When you're anticipating who you're gonna go to, based on the look, because you're going to get pressure in a hurry. It was Kyrie McDonald there, the redshirt freshman who gave him the pressure. <laughs> a 
On the ground, Watt is short to set up third and goal. You know Alabama wants to keep this score in the single digits. Daniel Wright, rather active, number three in Crimson. His brother Major was a standout safety in Florida, played the NFL with the Bears and Bucks. Obvious four down territory, so you're going for it if you don't pick it up here on third down. Bonner quick release in search of Tyler, and it's Daniel Wright again in there for the pass breakup. Tell you what, this is kind of his drive. And he saved a couple of touchdowns. Made some nice tackles, and then here in pass defense, covering up the big tight end, Reed Tyler. That's good work. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Daniel Wright. Four-star player out of high school. In there for a fourth and goal, and there's a whole lot of movement. Or Dean Sidnali, the right tackle, jumped. Uh, Blake Anderson was understandably concerned about the offensive line coming in. They got some good ones, some big guards, but they are very inexperienced, and this is not a place that you want to go with a lack of experience. Bam has been in the backfield all day. Try to get there on fourth and goal from outside the five. And there's more movement. This time it's Leonard Bonner, the left tackle. Ball start, number 70, offense. Five-yard penalty. New quarterback, Cadence is a little different. And he's got these big guys sitting in there a little bit too much to the point. Two big penalties that forced Blake Anderson to take a field goal here. Sawyer Williams, he missed an extra point in a field goal last week, so hopefully for Arkansas State, this could be a confidence-boosting kick. Seen Austin Jones miss a couple of PATs for Alabama today. Williams, 28 yards out. Nope. It's a good day to be an upright. Bama by 50. Alabama has turned into as brutally efficient a machine as it comes in college football. To a tongue of Iloa, these numbers are ridiculous once again. Four touchdowns on 19 attempts, 13 completions. His career, one touchdown throw, Andre Ware, every 6.6 .6 passes. <laughs> if you won a Heisman Trophy, you threw for a touchdown every 12.7 attempts. What's going on here with this kid? That's crazy. I mean. 6.6. .6. Just shows you exactly just how much talent this kid has. You know what we haven't done today? We haven't given Chris Cotter enough air time. Let's check in with Chris back in Bristol. Oh, boy. Chris, we are always, always happy to give you the airtime. That's no a doubt. good one. Old Big 8 rivalry, Colorado and Nebraska. Scott Frost homecoming. Did you hear Scott Frost went home? Did you hear about that? No. Yeah. Former no, Nebraska really. quarterback. Uh, what? Coaching the team now, huh? <laughs> Nebraska, the opener with Akron canceled. Uh, I think they're in good hands. He knows the recipe to get that thing you know, turn back around to where expectations are to compete for national championships every single year. New quarterback for the Tide, Mac Jones. A darn good third stringer. Brian Robinson fighting for the first down marker. You know the last time Scott Frost lost again? That was in 2016. These Arkansas State Red Wolves. That was the last time UCF lost.
back in the Auto Nation Cure Bowl in 2016. Justice Hansen with a few touchdown throws. So Arkansas State couldn't beat, we don't think, the defending national champions today, but at least they were the last team to beat, you know, the other defending national hey, champions. I was, I was impressed with there. Blake Anderson after the win in the Gatorade bath, he didn't flinch. No. Didn't flinch, didn't look back, didn't, you know, go, you know, even give a hint that it was cold. Hey, how do you think uh, our, you're on a Twitter, how do you think my Twitter's going to look from Bama fans for calling UCF the other national champions? <laughs> Just deleted for a couple of days? Yeah. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. You're watching the SEC favorites on ESPN. Alabama, number one. SEC play starts next week with Ole Miss. Ole Miss still locked up in a battle with its classic rival, Southern Illinois. They get to the playoff this year. It's going to be earned at, a at Ole Miss, A&M. Arkansas is going to be tough. You think so? You like you got, Chad Morris? I love Chad thought? Morris coach teams, no doubt about it. Logan Bonner with a first down run. All right, so this schedule, this SEC West, the gauntlet as per usual. Let's take a look. What do you think are the, the, tr the trickiest games here? What are the potential losses here for Alabama? 19% chance to If LSU to out. can maintain what they showed a week ago, I mean, that's a potential trap. Mississippi State's playing well. And you get to the Iron Bowl where they lost last year. Yeah, that's that's a tough one with another talented Auburn team. So there are a couple of games there. That's why I said if they get there this year, it's going to be well earned. Now, there's plenty of talent. All right, time to check in once more with Chris Cotter. Chris? tailback and a quarterback yep. last week. Joe Burrow, Nick Brosette, big one over Miami. And uh, Tate Martell, you saw the Dwayne Haskins number 20 to 23. I know we had our early Heisman list, a very early Heisman list. You shout it out. Jonathan Taylor, Kyler Murray. I'll just say keep an eye on, on Dwayne Haskins, who's been brutally efficient so far for Ohio State, taking over for JT Barrett. That's your big primetime game next week, Buckeyes and TCU. Looking, looking at how Tate Martell's playing, they may be a two-quarterback team before long. Third down, here's a burst, Marcel Murray. Daniel Wright gets him to the ground. Arkansas State has found a run game late. I think as they get deeper into their schedule with, at Tulsa next week and they host UNLV and Georgia, go on the road to Georgia Southern, look for Marcel Murray to, to play a little bit bigger role in this Arkansas State offense. Coaches love him. True freshman running back. Led them last week in rushing yards in his first game. Led them in receiving yards, too, actually. 54 on the ground, 75 through the air. You can tell just by the body language, he is chopping at the bit to, to get going and to be cut loose. He is not afraid of the moment. And bowling with the catch. Third and two coming up for Arkansas State. The next time you see them, it will obviously be more competitive than this. And they, again, uh, are favored to win the Sun Belt Conference. Blake Anderson would like to do that, but he'd like this to be the best group of five program in the country. They've got a little ways to go, but they're one of the better ones. Seven straight bowls. They're just running into Bama and Iyabi Enoma true freshman with the play. I mean, look, Arkansas State, you want a good coaching job? You want a Power 5 coaching job? Or Boise State, which is Power 5 quality? Come here. They were all one and done, though. Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn, Brian Harson. So Blake Anderson has had to rebuild this roster and win almost on the fly because of all the players who left. 
with those coaching changes. In fairness, all those that left were pretty much dream jobs by those coaches. Absolutely. Hugh Freeze going to Miss, Ole Miss. Uh, Gus Malzahn going back to Auburn. Brian Harson back to Boise State, you know, where they, all of them had got, had been before. So, you know, those are like dream jobs. Gus Malzahn, as I mentioned, Arkansas Arkansas State head coach in 2012, and has done a pretty good job. Nine and three there, but then moved on to Auburn and has built a solid, solid program for the Auburn Tigers. With the Auburn job in 2013, and. Alabama fans don't want to remember what happened that year. There's a great throw by Bonner. It was not hauled in. Those Jay are, Adams those are to places to those three coaches. They came a call in that you could not say no to, but you're right. This is a nice throw by the redshirt sophomore out of Roulette, Roulette, Texas. And he's hit Brandon Bowling on a couple of occasions. He's another Texas kid out of McKinney. Is that near you? No, I think McKinney, if I'm accurate with this, I think it's up near Dallas. Okay. Another round of Know Your Texas Geography with Andre Ware. <laughs> Bonner, back foot again. And he just led his target a little bit too much. This time it was Justin McKinnis, who does not come from Texas. He comes from Pierre Fonds, Quebec. You know where that is? Uh, yeah. Quebec. I can put it together. It's near Montreal. Very good. You're a big Canadian guy. I love it. I love the game. I still watch the games, even though football season Do is you? in full swing here. Oh, I love watching Canadian football. There's no doubt about it. The ESPN app you can tune in. Bonner on the run. Ooh. That hit the hands of an Alabama player, which is not what he likely intended. LeBron Ray gets the pass deflection. SEC, the big one uh, today in SEC action was Georgia, South Carolina, and as predicted by Kerb Herbstreet and a couple of others, Kirk Herbstreet and a couple of others on game day. That was a big UGA win. Hey, what, you give them credit. I'm going to take it away because <laughs> they picked against my Cougars today, and we put a whipping on somebody. <laughs> okay. We're going to get through the SEC first, and we'll let you gloat. <laughs> Mississippi State, Nick Fitzgerald's back. They get the win. And, hey, Kentucky, Florida. We saw Kentucky last week. Which you dare pick against. 31 the in a row for Florida. Will the streak continue tonight? Logan Bonner spinning away. Look at this fourth down run. Bonner needs the 12. He slides down right there. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the spot. Looks a little short. Just short of the first down. You got a Kentucky, Florida pick today? I'm going to go Florida because they're at home. And, you know, it's just tough to go into the swamp and win a game. Dan Mullen's got them going. And uh, I was impressed by their win last week. Let's see if it's 32 in a row. Oh, Kentucky's come so close the last couple of years, led by 13 in the fourth last year, overtime in 2016. 11,621 days since Kentucky last beat Florida, but who's time, really? I think I'm in trouble with Megan Powell for picking Florida. I gotta do I gotta do some serious apologizing. Yeah, Megan is our graphics operator for those that yes. don't know. And how could you not know, really? Leads Kentucky Blue. Maybe tonight's the night. Who knows? Kentucky can run the ball with Benny Snell and AJ Rose. Maybe they've they seem to put things out. together last week against Central Michigan. Sports Center's coming up tonight. There's a big late game in the desert. Michigan State taking on Herm Edwards and the Sun Devils. Stan and Max will be with you then. 1.45 a.m. Eastern, 12.45 Central. Herbie joins the show with his college football standouts. Georgia will be one. Sights and sounds from the gridiron. And I want to know why Serena Williams was penalized a game in the second set. I think we're all interested in that. Naomi Osaka won the U.S. Open. Find out what went down there in Queens. 1.45 a.m. Eastern, 12.45 Central, ESPN and the ESPN app. Another wild Saturday of sports as we have kicked off college football a couple of weeks into the season, and it is full speed ahead from here. 
What did you learn about Alabama today as we put this thing to bed? They're good. They're, you learned, they're, you they're, learned they're, that? Yeah, they're good in a lot of areas that you don't give them credit for. They can, they can win a football game if they need to grind it out in terms of their running game. And then if they need be, they can spread you out and throw the ball all over the park. What I learned about Tua is that he can put it into any window. If he needs to, to, to make plays, he can do it. But the obvious of management of a football game, he can do that as well. And I'll tell you what, they are talented everywhere on offense and defense. Mac Jones with a new completion to Jalen Waddle, so Baba will have to kick it away one more time. And don't think so, Scott Cochran's letting up. I think all that means they're pretty good. No doubt about okay. it. Okay. Well deserving of being the number one ranked team in the country. And uh, rightfully so, you're the, the champs until it's taken away. And with this group, somebody's gonna have to take it because they're that they're that good. Ole Miss next week? I don't feel that one, big guy. <laughs> A&M, week <laughs> after that? I don't feel I don't that know. one either. Don't forget, we are still in the midst of a big day of football. Clemson and A&M, that game's you know, you just kicked off. You mentioned A&M. Tonight. You talk about co coaches just like challenges. They love challenges. And Jimbo Fisher, when you take the Texas A&M job, forget about conference. You might have the, the toughest conference is the SEC West. Sure. So that's the ultimate challenge in all of college football is conquering that monster. And you forget about the, the king of the hill that's that's been there for quite some time, and that's the Crimson Tide. So uh, you wanted a challenge. You got it. Bama, Auburn, LSU every year. Good luck. He's got the resources and the money to do it. Flag thrown with 55 seconds to go, 57 to 7 game. Nick Saban waiting for this marker. How do you think Nick Saban feels right now? He's still coaching. I mean, you know, I just, I think guys, when you coach with the intensity, we get the call here. Number 34 offense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. When you show up and you coach, with the intensity that he does in a blowout win like today or a close ball game, you've got to love what you're doing. And I think he genuinely loves what he's doing. He loves to teach not only players but coaches, which is why you see the Nick Saban coaching tree that we, we showed in the graphic earlier, Kirby Smart being one of those coaches. But and he takes great pride in it. LSU and Southeast Louisiana as we speak just underway that game to follow right here on ESPN 2 LSU starts with the opening kick after that week one upset over Miami and LSU jumped all the way up in the rankings from the bottom of the top 25 to 11. Could be another exciting addition to that rivalry later in this year. Alabama will go to that move. We might be one play away from putting this game to bed. Alabama led it 40-0 at the half. And Logan Bonner is going to run out of bounds, so we will not be one play away from ending this game. He gets booed from the Crimson Tide student section for stopping the clock, which seems unnecessarily harsh. It was a great game for Jalen Hurts. I think, Andre, if there's anybody to feel good about this game that didn't feel great last week. Jalen Hurts did not lead Alabama on a touchdown drive last week. He was excellent today. That was all my doubters take this. You know, I'm, yep. I'm still around. I need to remind some folks that, uh, that I can still play quarterback and I can play it at a high level. That's what Jalen Hurts did in his time in the ball game today. He looked sharp. He anticipated throws. He showed some toughness staring down the barrel of, of a blitz and then delivering a touchdown pass to Irv Smith. I was very, very impressed with Jalen Hurts and his game today, as well as I was when I got a chance to see him in practice on Thursday. That's that. Number one team in the country shows why. To a tongue of Iloy, Jalen Hurts, both superb. Alabama gets a defensive touchdown from Savion Smith, and the tied are 2-0.
57-7, your final score. Bama gets the win. We're going to stay in the SEC here on ESPN2. Southeastern Louisiana and LSU right now from Baton Rouge.